Long Ha and Tashi Dele, from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center here on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. We present this class every Thursday night, six to eight o'clock Hawaiian time, and recorded on our website for global time zone. I'm Lama Tashi. Presenting this class in the Tibetan tradition of what they call shamanistic Lamaism, there are many important factors that we, that we consider. But the most important of Bodhisattva training is the ability to meditate and stay present learn to adopt a state of presence, not only in meditation, but in connection with your worldly activities when not doing formal practice. And the basis of meditation in Tibetan Buddhism is to understand the illusory nature of everything. They call this sunyata, which is a Sanskrit word for emptiness or voidness. And that is actually the foot of all the practices. Because once you understand your true nature, the simplicity of it is like an empty sky. The mother principle of space. And in fact, the universe is a matriarchy, especially in the tradition of the Lamas, which dates back to the Buddha Shakyamuni 2,600 years ago, pervaded India, Tibet, and now the whole planet. This type of practice. Oh. What, what does the mother principle simply mean is like a mother's relationship to her only child, an unconditional feeling of kindness towards oneself, others, and the environment of the world around you. And, and if you get that, then the practices all fall into place, make sense. And it doesn't matter if it's that statement or using the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and space, or understanding the usefulness of the Dakini energy, which is the female energy of our mind and the universe together. But having a sort of deep honor and respect for the teachers, Sanskrit word is guru, which point out your own true nature as inseparable from everyone in the universe and the universe itself. Even though we think that it's all inside, inside, outside, no difference. So in relation to the meditation practices, Tibetan Buddhism is the practice of peace and tranquility accomplished in meditation so that one can see their own true nature and then learn with guidance of the teacher how to use that and have fun doing it. I'm reading from Gongshar Rinpoche's book, Vivid Awareness. Vivid awareness is actually your, your natural in, innate state of realization. And it's based on 
a complete openness to the universe as being a bodhisattva training field so that people can come very quickly to what we call Buddhahood or higher states of intelligence, maturity in the human condition. And the way he puts it in the book about vivid awareness, he points out that this openness causes a state of clarity where the judgmental mind disappears in a state like nakedness where you don't have to, when meditating, add anything or take anything away. You just relax and be as it is. And this creates this other dimension of being that we call ultimate awareness. And it's very, not only very healthy, but you gain higher states of intelligence. And that's very useful in being in the human condition. On page 111 of this book by Gongshai Rinpoche, he said, resting in meditation, he uses the term Kusulu, Kusulu, is someone who leads a very simple, uncomplicated life and does things easily without much effort. Similarly, in the resting meditation of Kusulu practice, we do not go through a lot of effort to do the meditation because there's not, not necessary the way we activate it to examine anything or study. We just rest simply in equipoise, which is a term for the present. And the practice, of course, is not to allow the mind to be judgmental, but more importantly, not to escape into past activity and thinking or future activity and thinking. The reason that realization of the nature of mind is, is not something we can find by searching for it from afar, because it's present in every one of us as the essence of mind itself. If we do not alter or change that, which we call mind in any way, while being present, that is enough. It is not as if we are bad and have to go through all sorts of effort to make ourselves good. Goodness is something we all have. And it's always present within all of us, no matter how Weird we get. The second part of the meditation practice is the connection to a Lama in the, in the modern day. And I'm talking about in, in this century. And, and why is the connection to the Lama of importance because his or her interest is only in your well being, not only in your growth and development, but also in your ability to evolve into these higher states of intelligence or awareness. Devotion to is the head of meditation as the Voidness is the foot of meditation. One who always prays to the Lama for guidance 
is opening the gate to the treasury of the Lama's oral instruction. Please bless us with genuine devotion to this person, he or she. It is crucial for meditation to have this devotion. And if our devotion is strong, our meditation will also be strong. If our devotion is not strong, our meditation will not be either. If we have 100% devotion, our meditation will be 100% perfect. Similarly, in fact, I have a church that's a shirt that my daughter sent me, a rainbow colored shirt that says on the front of it, 100% Mahamudra meditation. <laughs> I wear that one a lot. <laughs> We might think that the, the importance of devotion is taught for people of lesser qualities or capability, people who are not very smart. We might think it's blind faith, but it's none of that. This ability is, it, is that when we have strong devotion and conviction in the Dharma and our practice, together with that to our teacher, we will be extremely more diligent about our Dharma practice and be able to do it without any problems. So anyway, starting on page 111 of this book, by the time you get to the last page, it says many, many things in many different ways. But the last page sums it all up. By the virtue of accomplishing this, may infinite, may an infinite number of beings by our accomplishment be victorious in the battle with the demigods of platitude. May they shine with majestic brilliance of the essence of the profound meaning of their own minds. And may there be a celebration of all of this with a new golden age in the human condition on this planet right now. And he put a picture of himself as a kid on the front of the book. <laughs> because you really don't grow up, you evolve. Okay? And to have a child like nature is more fun. <laughs> So I think of myself like the deity, 16, 18 year old, male or female, in a human body, in a rainbow body, having fun. Now we take refuge. In order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and live in the sentient beings, our mothers, we now all together take refuge and offer prostrations and other practices of the skillful means of the Kagyu Lama. We go for refuge to all the glorious holy Lamas. We go for refuge to all the items or the deities gathered in our mandala. We go for refuge to all the supreme Dharma. We go for refuge to all those that have conquered their mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all the noble Sangha of the four lineages of Tibetan Buddhism. We go for refuge to all the Dakas and Dakinis, who are the protectors and defenders of Dharma 
and establish this in the minds of all human beings as a complete understanding of transcending awareness. Then we take refuge in bodhicitta, the practice of voidness together with the six practices of bodhisattva training. To the Buddha Dharma in this Supreme Assembly, we go for refuge until enlightenment. May I, to merit gain from practicing the six bodhisattva disciplines, called the six perfections, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings, my mothers. In chanting the altruistic motivation, you are communicating to all the spirits in and around you that you are interested in their well being. Da dong go wa nam te da dong yam te sem chem tam se du di ne jung te ji si. Chang Chu Ming Po La Chi Ki Bardu. And in chanting the refuge, you invite all of the six refuges to be in your presence. All then, Lama Dampa Nama Chang Su Chiyo Yedam Chokor Gi La So. Nam la chan su chi yo Nam pe chur nam la chan su chi yo Nam pe gendu nam la chan su chi yo Nam pe chur nam la chan su chi yo Nam wo kan do chung 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 me in chanting the Bodhisattva prayer called Bodhijita, you are entering the training of Bodhisattva to become a Buddha. Sanjay Chodam Choki Chodam Mahajan Chodardu Agni Chan Su Chi Dagi Jin Sok Chi Pe Sok Nam Chi Chodam Manjo Kanje In formal practice, you chant the altruistic motivation so that you know where you're going. And you chant the refuge of the six refuges, the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Lama, Deity, and Protectors, so you know you have support. in this trip of going nowhere in particular. And in the six bodhisattva perfections of training, you get there fast. And so one of the support practices is to do prostrations, body, speech, and mind, lay down, extend your arms, feet, legs, lay all the way down the floor, stand up, and take the energy of the universe into your body, speech, and mind. By doing one prostration, it's recommended that even if you can't lay down and stand up, that you imagine yourself doing that. And what, you, what is happening is you're taking all of what we just chanted, all these words in English and Sanskrit, and putting them into action 
to move into the totality of space itself, which is an energy program of infinite light, which is what makes everything. Everything that exists, everything that you can think of, everything that you can imagine, everything that you feel is this and none other. So it makes it easier and easier to abandon what is not appropriate, delete negative thinking and judgment and so forth. and accomplish more and more being totally positive with generosity, morality, ethics, and good manners, patience, perseverance or diligence, meditative focus using the imagination with the focus trained by your teacher, and allowing those five basic Bodhisattva trainings at both the relative and ultimate level of your situation, of your mind, to gently ease you into infinite awareness, infinite states of potential. To start with tonight, we're going to do the three lights breathing practice. And people ask, why is it necessary? Because it connects you to the five elemental natures of the female aspect of your own energy whether you're a man or a woman. But more importantly, it gets you used to sitting with your back straight, head slightly tilted forward, mouth closed, breathing through the nose if you can, hands in a comfortable position, either on the knees or in your lap, and eyes focus to the energy program of what the universe is directly in front of your eyes, right here. As an example of the nature of your mind and where you're going with the understanding and evolutionary process of these practices. When you inhale, imagine that the air elements of earth, water, fire, air, space are coming into you as white light filling your lungs. In that moment, spontaneously, all the energy of those elements has passed powerfully through every cell in your body, through every atom and molecule. And you visualize that energy as red light flashing through your whole form. Then combine these two energies of the white and the red and exhale blue light out your nose to space as a powerful healing breath to everyone in the universe. And think of the sky, the infiniteness of space itself. And in this way, you start to realize how powerful you are. Inhale white light, fill your lung. The red light flashing of the energy through your body of the elements. 
Combine these two and exhale blue light out to the sky, to everyone in the universe. As healing, a powerful healing breath. And to help you to accomplish this, count 21 of this three light code of breathing. White, red, blue. Inhale. When you reach the 21st count, take your imagination or focus off of your breathing and combine the code of the three colored lights into a tiny particle of light and center that in your heart chakra, right in the middle of your chest, in the central channel of your life force. The moment you do this, you're connecting to the infinite light of boundless space. And that reality is the nature of everything. So for a few moments, sit and enjoy space. And again, focusing on the particle in your heart chakra. Withdraw from the dimension of infinite potential and create a small sphere of clear light. Like a tiny bubble. Then with your imagination, expand that into your choice of one of the five elements of the five healing factors, elemental healing factors. Tonight, I'm choosing the earth symbol. So as this little bubble of light expands into this dimension of being, our universe, you imagine a six-sided yellow cube of light about the size of your thumbnail in your heart center. Label it Earth. Then visualize that to move out in front of your chest and up before your eyes. about two feet in front.
Then from that point, imagine it to grow in size to be a large six-sided room of yellow light or golden light with your form body just as you are sitting or standing or laying down, however you are inside. In this way, you start to take the <clears throat> healing energy into your form, light into light, like water into water, earth into earth, however you want to think of it. In accomplishing this level of healing oneself, extend this program to others by imagining the six-sided cube to enclose an area of about 50 miles in every direction. Here in Hawaii, we imagine the island of Kauai and it's around some of the surrounding ocean inside the yellow cube. Ensure it farther by expanding it in size to completely enclose Mother Earth, including her atmosphere. Expand it in size again to enclose our solar system, which is billions of miles in every direction. One more time, expand it to completely enclose our spiral dish-shaped galaxy. Sharing the energy with the infinite number of worlds and solar systems and beings, sentient beings in that area. Then move about beyond the confines of your ordinary mind, your conceptual mind, your thinking mind. And merge the symbol of the earth element with the mother element of boundless space. Relax. Enjoy being home in space. It's something most of us never get enough of. Then remove from, move from that infinite dimension of potential. Again, create the six-sided cube labeled Earth enclosing the galaxy. Imagine it to decrease in size to just enclosing the solar system. Moving at a speed faster than light, imagine it to just enclosing Mother Earth.
then just enclosing the area of the town, city, or a large area of where you are doing this practice. Your neighborhood. And take all of that life support energy, healing energy, and condense it to the size of a room sized six sided cube of yellow light, seeing your form body just as you are inside. You might notice a difference in the energy in your body. Finish the practice by imagining the six-sided cube to again appear in its original small size in front of your eyes. Drop it to chest level and bring it into your heart center. Reduce it to the size of a tiny particle of light, which blends with the infinite light of boundless space and relax in the presence of no meditation. Kusulu. Finish your sentence, bring your awareness in front of your eyes and spread it out into your world that you are influencing. And dedicate the results to all such a being, your mother. I was asked today if I could explain the stupa. Actually, there are 13 different kinds of these symbols of the Buddha's mind. And the one we have here on Kwai is actually a stupa. It's called the Dakini stupa dedicated to the Tara, and she has her own shrine in that stupa. But the stupas are basically the same as representing what we just did. The power and energy of the female program of the universe has the five elements. The base, all the way up to here, is the earth element. This bowl 
is the water element upside down. And it is actually the door where the stupid deity sits, usually a, a Buddha, open to the world. Then this is the earth, water, and then the golden disc stacked either 10 or 13, depending on the circle, are the fire element of everything that you think or imagine. And this top two little spheres facing each other is like a lotus reflecting in water is the air element. And then at the very top is this sun and moon. And atop the sun is a tiny flame of awareness pointing to the sky. So these five are the basis of everything that exists, your body and everything. Inside, outside, thoughts, emotional energy, feeling, sight, sound, taste, touch. But when we hit this flame at the top, it is the awareness of everything inseparable from the sky. It's pointing to the sky. Why? Because everything comes out of the sky and goes back to the sky or space. And in that reality, you have a wisdom nature of this whole universe being a bodhisattva training field. It is called the Dharmakaya, the all pervasive nature of your mind as a Dharma vehicle. And that becomes the sun and moon. Then the lotus is the activity of that because like the air, it's energy in motion. And this fire energy is how it penetrates your thinking and your emotional program, along with your imagination, especially in meditation practice. The bowl is the accomplishment of taking human birth as a water element, which is most of the nature of your body, on a planet with awareness, what kind of awareness? Discerning awareness. Discerning that these five wisdom natures and these five elements are useful, infinitely useful. And in fact, the lamas, when I came to Hawaii, had us design these five elements and build stupas on Maui and here, Kauai, Big Island, and use them for not only healing, but for meditational accomplishment, using the five spheres of our wisdom nature which are simply the same color code as the five elements, can't inseparable. So, so your ultimate wisdom nature is, everything is integrated into you. There's no such thing as separation. There's no outer or inner, or higher or lower, or good or bad, none of that. The second one is your into bodhisattva activity with the training of the teacher. That's the green sphere. The white sphere is your, your, your clarity of knowing that the nature of space itself is voidness and how to use that, how to be that. And know nothing, there's nothing beyond that. The gold one is. Everything's equal, level the playing field. No good or bad, no high or low, superior or inferior, no delusion. And the red sphere at the bottom is your discerning awareness that your inner natural state of the mind 
is the most valuable. So discerning awareness and these other five are energy fields called Buddha fields. And they're, the five together are like the five elements. They can't be separate. It's the mother nature of the universe with the father principle of how to use it. That said, we introduce the seed syllable of infinite healing, which is we are, when we were doing the five elements breath, it was the blue light going to the sky and everybody, infinite application of healing is the sound boom. And I put it in front of the stupa because everything the stupa represents and everything we put inside these stupas to activate energy and people to come to them for healing or realization or to give teachings represents infinite healing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and in a state of wealth, health, and good, and wealth together. And so this Hoon sign will be the basis of the deity Padma Sambhava and the Lamas with the Lamas help. We have the text of the words condensed from the practice of the Padma Sambhava seven line prayer called Shower of wisdom or the rainfall of blessing. We're going to do this practice starting with the breath. Just the way we did the breathing practice of the five elements with the five elements healing practice. Inhale the light of the elements as your wisdom energy and hear the sound OM, which is the Dharmakaya energy field entering into your form body. As that energy passes through every cell in your body, that mother principle, father principle together gives you the sound ah, which is the Sanskrit word for the vibration of energy. Then you exhale these two together like you did the healing breath out to the universe and hear the sound boom. So that is infinitely applied to infinite sentient being under any conditions, timelessly. Then you sound that home 10 times. The first three is connect your body, speech, and mind all together in the practice. The second four wounds are the body, speech, and mind in actual accomplishment of the qualities of the practice. And then the result of those two is the mind becomes the Dharmakaya of the infinite potential of the universe, the Sambhogakaya of the infinite potential of all the deity, specifically like the one we're going to do tonight. And the nirmanakaya of the teacher, loving kindness, compassion, power, and insight into you. And with each breath, you sound these three codes of om, ah, and hum.
and color them home white and visualize it in your head. The ah red and visualize it in your throat. And the blue home, the wisdom emanation of your Lama's mind to your mind and to your heart center. Then bring the three vibrations of the Om on home down into the home in your heart center. And the Lama, the root Lama, the root, representing all the teachers the last 2,600 years of evolution, which Sakamuni is teaching down to the present moment at your service. Oh, So these three, the Om, An, Hum, are the three places of the deities used in these practices. And when they all come together through the practice of the truth, qualities, most positive, intelligent qualities come out. It's because of the connection to your own true nature. So now we start the practice of the seven line prayer of Guru Rinpoche, which brings this shower of blessings into your situation. Just the seven line prayer, whether you chant it in Sanskrit or say it in English or any other language. We'll start with the Sanskrit. Oh, Oregon, Yogi, News of Shah, Bema, Beso, Don Polo, Yazin, Jerky, Uzur, Bema, Jerky, Jesus, John, Maybe JC not to be Jen Beaver, Jesus, Guru, five miles, save you for. Oh, Shall 
que tem a jovem Jesus, acorde com o mundo, peixe, peixe, tatu, gente, peixe, Jesus, cura, tem a ser. The more you chant this seven line prayer, the closer you become to Guru Rinpoche, who was born in Kashmir in about the sixth century AD. And they say he was born of light, fully mature and eight years of age, standing on an eight petal lotus in a beautiful lake of eight quality. And all of that is a symbol of how his mother with, with the assistance of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas brought Guru Rinpoche, or how he emanated into this world of the human condition. Born on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, called Kashmir, in the far fallen heart of the Lodi, you who attained most marvelous accomplishment called cities, Renowned as the lotus born, we are surrounded by an infinite host of Dakinis. As I practice following in your footsteps, we pray you approach to confer your blessing. O Guru Tame, O Padma, bestow cities upon us. Now, as you chant this, either in Sanskrit, you think that Guru Rinpoche, as he approaches, in union with his consort, Neshe Surya, is emanating from their place of sexual union, bliss energy into your heart. And from their home and their heart center into the home and your heart center, realization of the true nature of your own mind with these words. Home on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, fallen heart of the lotus, you attain most mar marvelous and excellent city. Renowned as a lotus form, you're surrounded by a vast retinue of Dakini. As I practice following your footsteps, I pray you approach to confer blessing. Home Guru, Pavan City, home. Bestow these blessings upon us. Now, the blessing is the bliss energy of the nature of the world around you, as symbolized by Guru Rinpoche in union with his consort, Ama Yeshe Soiga. And from their place of union, that enters into your heart center that energy of bliss. Then with the words of the mantra, the understanding of what these blessings are and how to use them start to develop in your stream of being. So the more you chant the seven line prayer, the more the transference of the blessings and bliss energy takes place. Home on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, in the fallen heart of the lotus, you attain most marvelous and excellent city. Renowned as the lotus born, you are surrounded by a vast retinue of Dakinis. As I practice following you in your footsteps, I pray for you to approach and confer your blessings. Oh, Guru, Pema, City, Om, bestow these cities and blessings upon you. 
So just this much of the bracket brings great healing energy into your situation. But more importantly, the blessings of how powerful the Lama energy is and what was established by this teacher a reincarnation of Shakyamuni Buddha in connection with this Kamsaryeshi Sargyal is for you and all Dharma practitioners, no matter what practice you do. Now we connect to the Lama Yeshe Soga with the second prayer of this practice. Jalka Ke Yun Cho Yen Kun Zong Po Ho Bang Cho Pe Ma Che Che Ma Che Ku Ju So Ju Pe Shen Kang Jo So and we chant this as many times as you can, but once is very powerful. This is bringing the Lama in union as you visualize Guru Rinpoche and Yeshe Sarga in sexual union as shown by this picture. And she has a knife and skull cup behind his head, and he has a skull cup in his hand with a with a pumpa of empowerment base in it, and right hand holding a vajra. Dharma Datu, Kunto Zanko, mother of all the victorious ones, kindest soul mother who protects the Tibetans and all people, restorer of most excellent cities, sovereign of the Dakinis of supreme bliss, Yeshe Sorya at your lotus feet, I pray, approach and confer your blessings which pacify inner, outer, and secret obstacles. So just that much chanted brings the blessings of the Dakinis. And this energy is filling your body and all the worldly space around you, no matter what the situation, worldly realms of humans, animals, heavenly realms of spirits and war and war gods of, of the celestial beings, and the lower realms of the Pratas, the deprived spirits, and the spirits of the hell realms of hatred and anger and abuse. So Dakinis, all pervasive, they do the energy of Padma Sambhava. They remove the obstacles, but do not only spiritual practice, but worldly endeavors that are appropriate for the Dharma practitioner. Then we continue this practice. Meshe Soyo and Pabla Sambhava stabilize the longevity of our Lama Guru. Confer your blessings which pacify this area of disease, hunger, warfare, famine, drought, and environmental destruction. Confer your blessings which pacify sorcery, hexes, and curses. Confer your blessings which increase longevity and splendor and transcendental knowledge of our true nature and how to use it. Confer your blessings which spontaneously accomplish all our appropriate wishes.
So this mantra combines the mantra of Padmasambhava with Yeshi Surya and K cuts through all negative energy and obstacles and toxic situations. Then we continue. Ah, sound that. The energy of sound of energy itself. Ah, before me in the ordinary form, on Garun, on organs, Kashmir stainless lake, Dharmakosha. In its profound depths are filled with the water of eight qualities representing the eight qualities of our Buddha nature. Within its center in the stem of a jewel lotus with petals unfolded, upon this sits Oregon Dorje Chong as Fabus and Bali, in whom all the sources of refuge converge. Brilliant with the splendor of the 32 major and 80 minor marks of a Buddha. He's embracing Soyville, a mother consort. He holds a Vajra in his right hand and a vase with a skull cup in his left. Exquisite in their silks and ornaments of jewels and gold, within a vast expanse of five colored light, they blaze in majesty, blessing with the blessings of supreme bliss. Please recall your child with love, summon forth the dynamic compassion from the vastness of your enlightened intent. Grant, grant your blessings to my devoted heart. I pray swiftly show all signs and indications of accomplishment <coughs> and confer the most excellent and ordinary accomplishments called cities. Oh, organ, you be new shop shop. Jengi Lubjur Jesu so Guru Pema Sidi. So the seven line prayer is home on the northwest border of the country of Oregon, in the fallen heart of the lotus. Marvelous in the perfection of your attainment, you're known as the lotus form. You're surrounded by a circle. Retinue of many dakinis as your mandala, following in your footsteps. I, I will practice and pray to you to come to confer your blessing. Guru Pema Siddhi Hum. Then we sound the mantra. Uh, first of all, just Guru Rinpoche and then, then Guru Rinpoche in union with Mama Yeshe Sardin. Om Aho Vajrayuru Pema Siddhi 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 Om Mahapur, 
treasure guru Padma Siddhi Mahu 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 so Om Maha Om is the power of your body, speech, and mind as a bodhisattva, joining with the mind of Guru Padma Sambhali to accomplish infinite healing. Om. Om, the energy of the universe entering into our actual wisdom body as the deity. Ah, the energy of the universe pervading all of space. And whom the accomplishment of wisdom. And this becomes a, a skalka equal to the nature of Dharma Dhatu, which is the energy of space itself as the Dharma Kaya. Okay. Fourteen. Now we combine the two mantras. Om Bhagavadakini Sidi Om. Om And as you say this mantra, then this energy coming from their union enters into your heart, and you become Vajra Guru Bhama Sambhava in union with Yeshe Soiga. And the bliss energy becomes your mind of realization of pure awareness. 
Are you saying this mantra, you imagine an infinite cloud of Dakini in and around you, filling space, accomplishing your wishes and whatever is appropriate for the benefit of sentient beings that you have come with. Oh, Now just whisper that mantra. Then just imagine the mantra words. And then again, whisper the words. Then sound them softly. Oh, 
Pay. When you end with pay, it means cut all degenerate negative thinking and obstacle. And we're going to sing the sound, the song of the Dakinis. It's called the Dharani. <clears throat> Dharani is a Vajra song, indestructible energy. And the application of it is not only to summon the Dakinis to your worldly situation from now on, be present, but also. So that you understand the nature of the Dharmakaya is the energy field of the Dakini. All beings are the manifest nature of supreme bliss and joy. The Yogini is the Dakini or Yogini is the naturally dwelling mandala of all beings of the three realms without exception as natural Buddhas. So everyone is already a Buddha. Together with them, transformed through compassion, the youthful Dakini that we enjoy the practices with are our consort. For our support. Alas, ignorant beings, beasts, do not understand this. Beautiful inherent Dakinis accept this in great bliss. Whoever does not meditate in the absolute truth of their natural state or mind will not attain actual Buddhahood. Understand that outer and inner are indistinguishable and inseparable. And thus you will have the potential to liberate yourself from all worldliness. Alas, ignorant beasts do not understand it. Beautiful inherent Dakinis accept it in great bliss. Om ah hum, om ah hum. To close this practice session, imagine your Lama, Root Lama, or Lama Guru in front of you, he or she as Padmasambhava and Yeshe Sargao in union. From the three syllables of the Lama's three places, Om, Ah, Hum, emerge the three light rays of white, red, and dark blue light. As you see these three lights and these three vibrations simultaneously into you, as they are absorbed, into your three places, your three doors of body, speech, and mind are purified of all obscurations and become the vajras of enlightened activity of the body, speech, and mind of all the Buddhas of the three times and ten directions. Finally, the Lama, together with the retina, resolve into light 
which becomes a white sphere glowing red and marked with whom in your heart chakra. As this, as, as this is taking place in your heart center, you dwell in co-emergent Dharmakaya, the awareness of the void nature of the entire universe and everyone and everything in it. The Lama's, in this way, the Lama's mind and your mind become inseparable. Ah, ah, sound that. Ah, ah, and rest in the timeless awareness of your own present accomplishment. When the great master Pama Sambhava was leaving with the pure land of the Rakshas called Bhutan, Nishe Sorgal prostrated and circumambulated him, placed her lotus feet on her head, and made the following prayer of aspiration. My Lama Guru, and the blessing of my Maha Lama Guru throughout all my lifetimes in this palace of the pure land, may I remain close and not separate from my Lama. By my stable faith and devotion, may I please him or her with perfect service. May I receive his blessings and the nectar of his or her instructions and the hard essence of the profound realization. By the blessings of the three kayas of my body, speech, and mind, may they ripen right now in this place. May I excel in the profound development and completion stages of the deity yoga. May the Mars of wrong view, disease, demons, and all obstacles be immediately pacified. May my retinue and wealth increase and my appropriate wishes be fulfilled. In excellent places, such as charnel grounds, mountains, beaches, and snowy places, may I always accomplish the essence of the realization of the profound Smadi of Mahamudra. By the result of these practices, may the five enlightened activities be accomplished, and may the Divas and Rakshas become servants and guard the teachings of the Buddha. May the sacred Dharma taught by the Buddhas and Lamas arise effortlessly in the stream of my being. Possessing supreme knowledge, may I be endowed with sublime realization. And through the interdependence of bodhicitta, may all beings without exception be magnetized. And by the power of this uninstructed wish fulfilling jewel, may all my connections be meaningful. May the teachings of the Buddha spread everywhere, and may all the lineage holders and Dharma teachers flourish. May all beings achieve happiness 
and may all realms be pure. Through my body, speech, and mind, according to the individual capacities of being to be trained, may the, the harmonica of the Lama arise immeasurably, retain them in whatever way is necessary. In short, may all of samsara and nirvana without exception become inseparable from the Lama heart. And may omniscient Buddhahood, the three kayas beyond meeting or separating be quickly attained. May sentient beings pray to me, may the gurus convert their blessings, may the idams grant our cities, may the dakinis give prophecies of perfective accomplishment, and may the Dharma followers remove all obstacles. May the teachings of the Buddha spread everywhere, everywhere, always increasing with the sound soha. May all beings be peaceful and happy. May they practice the Dharma day and night and benefit not only oneself, but all others. And may all accomplish Buddhahood. May the virtue and, and pure in nature of my own practice churn the spheres of the, the depths of the three lower realms and of all samsara and may sentient beings not return to this ocean of emotional existence and to those as one mandala may the three choirs manifest as the great secret treasury of all the victorious bodhisattvas this inseparable teaching of Adi Yoga is like the sun rising in the sky, may it spread and increase everywhere. Through this and other foundations of virtue that I will practice and generate, please generate the wishes of the glorious Lama Gurus, and may all be endowed with the qualities of full accomplishment. May I have the power to spread and increase the precious teachings of the Buddhas. May my knowledge and compassion and ability be perfected and may I right now become what I already am, a Buddha. May all beings dwelling in the six types of migration traverse this vast ocean of suffering and samsara and quickly become actual Buddha. This prayer was extracted by the Dakini for Leshe Sargo from the rock of the lion faced one in Tibet called Lodra Menda. Then we finish the practice with the dedication of merit. Kewa di merju do kove mama do kume chowa chinte malu ba de zala do kosho. Through the virtue of this practice and merit, may I quickly accomplish that of Oregon Lama, and through that may all beings, without exception, be established at that level of accomplishment. <laughs> By this virtue, having realized Mara Murdu, may it quickly establish all beings without a single exception in that state of accomplishment. By the blessings of the three bodies of the Buddha being accomplished, by the blessing of the truth of this Dharma being unchanging, and by the blessing of the wishes of the Sangha being unwavering, that's us. May this dedication prayer be fulfilled.